Hi, welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make this beautiful scrappy border for your quilt. This is actually part six of my 52 week series of scrappy blacks and it's part three of my mystery quilt for fall of 2022. The quilt behind me is my Winds of Time mystery quilt. We have uh, already learned how to do the, win the Weather Rain quilt black and the Sedona quilt black. And and today I'm going to share with you how you can put together this beautiful scrappy border, which is a checkerboard border for your scrappy quilt. Now let's get started here. Let's see how you put these together. Okay, so first of all, um, you'll want to pull down the PDF. If you're part of the 52 week series of scrappy blocks, you want to pull down the PDF that's linked in the description box below. If you're part of my mystery quilt class, you'll want to follow the link in the, in the description box below to the, my mystery quilt out on my blog and you'll pull that um, PDF from that um, location there. And now let's take a look at what is required for the corner blocks and the border blocks for our quilt. So the first thing we're going to make are four of the corner blocks. And the corner blocks simply require two and a half inch rectangles by four and a half inch. And they can be made from darks or mediums, whichever value you prefer. And there's a couple of different ways you can obtain two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. First of all, you could go to your scrap stash and pull five inch squares and simply cut it in half to create two, two and a half inch wide uh, rectangles, and then just trim off a half an inch so that it, the length is four and a half inches because the rectangles need to be two and a half by four and a half. That's one way of, of obtaining those. Or you could simply go to your strip uh, bin, which I have done, and I have pulled some darks out of my strip bin, and I've actually cut some two and a half inch wide by four and a half inch uh, rectangles from my strips. So that's another way that you can obtain that. You're also going to need a checkerboard unit um, for each of the corners and that includes a light and a dark or mediums. It, the values are up to you however you want to, uh, whatever values you choose to use. But I chose in this case lights and darks. They're each one and a half inch squares. I simply went to my one and a half inch bin and pulled those squares. I've got lots of one and a half inch squares so I'm going to be using those. Um, it is very important throughout this process to make sure that your everything is squared up properly and I'll give you those measurements in a minute. Okay, and you'll see here, these are some of the fabrics that I had um, used f when I ha actually created the quilt behind me on the wall using yardage. So I had a gold, this is my medium, this is one of my darks, and here's another one of my darks, and this is my light. Now I created strip sets, and I'm going to show you how that's done. That's another way of creating your checkerboards, a simple and fast way if you don't want to use or if you don't have a lot of one and a half inch squares. You're simply going to sew these strip sets together as you see I've done here with the light and the dark. It's a one and a half inch strip, whatever length you have, sew them together, quarter of an inch, and then you're going to press it open, which I've done here. These are, these are kind of small ones. I actually use these um, as I was working with the quilt behind me, but these were the ends of two strip sets, and you'll see that I have the dark and the light and the pressed open, and then you're going to put them together so that they nest beautifully. See how that nests really nicely right there? And then you're actually going to subcut that into one and a half inch squares, or um, I should say rectangle units, to make your checkerboard. And that's something that I have done here. So there is a one and a half inch unit that I had subcut. And once that's sewn, it will make a little two and a half inch checkerboard. And we'll go to the sewing machine now and you'll see how all of this is done. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make four corner blocks. And for each corner block, you're going to need a rectangle, a four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle. And you can obtain that by just cutting from uh, strips in your fabric stash, or you can cut it from uh, your five, and half, five inch squares. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to cut it in half. So now it's, I have two, two and a half by five inch rectangles. So I need to cut off a half an inch because I want this to be four and a half inches in length. So there we go. Now I have my rectangles. I also need 
one two and a half inch square for each of the four corner blocks. So I'm going to cut my strips here into two and a half inches. You could also obviously pull two and a half inch squares from your two and a half inch square um, bin. So here I have what I need. So let me lay it out for you. The border for the this border will measure four and a half inches in width, and then of course the length of your um, quilt. So here is what we're going to piece together. Whoops. So I'm going to piece together the four patch, and then this two and a half inch square is going to get sewn to this four patch, and then that will end up being four and a half inches width, and it will be um, sewn to this rectangle. So let me do that now, and I'll be right back. So here is the square, um, the checkerboard square. I have it all um, pressed right now, but it does need to be squared up to two and a half inches. It's really important that your checkerboards are squared up to two and a half inches. Otherwise, it's not going to fit on your border properly. So make sure that you square up each of these to two and a half inches. I'll do that now and I'll be right back. Now, as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot that came off, but it's enough that if this amount was added to each and every checkerboard within the row, your, uh, your board checkerboards would really not fit well at all. You'd be very, very frustrated. So make sure that you do square up each and every checkerboard unit. So now I am going to sew um, the two and a half inch square to the two and a half inch checkerboard, uh, which is part of this corner block. So let me do that real quickly for you. So then this is going to get pressed. I always try to press my seams to the dark whenever possible. Then it needs to be squared up to be four and a half inches by two and a half inches. It looks really close, but I'll uh, verify that. I'm going to go now and press it, and I'm going to square it up to two and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long. I'll be right back. So I have created one corner and I'll need to do four of these. I've got the four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle and I've used a dark. You could use a medium. It depends on what you want to do for your quilt. And this is a two and a half inch dark um, square. And then I have a two and a half inch checkerboard unit that I created using lights and darks. Now I'm going to show you how to make strip sets uh, for our the regular borders and uh, we're going to be making uh, checkerboard strip sets. So let me show you how that's done. So instead of using just the one and a half inch squares to make your checkerboard, I am going to use one and a half inch strips of fabric. And in this case, you'll see that I've already put a light strip and a dark strip sewn together. They're one and a half inch strips, and it doesn't matter what length, whatever you have in your strip bin, go ahead and use them and uh, you'll just keep making them until you have enough checkerboards to complete the borders, uh, depending on whatever size quilt you're using. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sew this strip set here next, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have two strip sets that are sewn, one and a half inch sets sewn together, and what I'm going to do is put them together so that opposites are lined up. So we have dark with light and light with dark. And I am going to nest these seams. You'll see how I've nested those seams and you can feel that. And I'm literally going to lay it on my mat, my cutting mat, 
and just run down the length of it and make sure that those seams are nested. And you can feel when it's nested, it's nice and flat in there. And then we are going to cut one and a half inch segments, as I had shown you earlier, from this uh, strip set. And I'll do that next. So I'm lining this up so that I am cutting one and a half inch segments, subcuts from this strip set. As you can see here, and then I can literally, and I can cut as many as I need, go all the way down your strip set, and then I'm gonna sew some quarter inch seam allowances to create the checkerboard. Now, as you can see here, I have sewn a number of these checkerboards together. These are the one and a half inch um, checkerboard units that I was able to create by sewing these little strip sets together using a quarter inch seam allowance. So now what I'm going to do is take them to the ironing board. I'm going to press them and cut them apart, press them and trim them up or square them up to two and a half inches. If you'd like to um, twist your seam allowances in the back, that is a simple way of doing that. As you can see, it looks like a little pinwheel there. And it's a great way to um, allow the seam allowance to lay nice and flat on the front. Basically, all I've done is just come to the back where that those two seams meet and twist it and then fold it and press. It almost does it on its own as you're working with it. So I'm gonna take these now to the ironing board and press them. So for every 12 inch block that's around the perimeter of your quilt, you're going to need to uh, create um, one of these, and that's going to include three of your two and a half inch rectangles in dark or medium, whichever value you choose, as well as a total of six of your checkerboards. And these are going to be sewn to the four and a half inch rectangles, and then they're going to be sewn together to create a 12 and a half inch by four and a half inch um, border unit. So I've just finished sewing uh, these units together, or the checkerboard part of the unit. And make sure as you are sewing them together that you're doing it in such a way that they're all following the, the correct and the same pattern. So in this case, I have lights going that way and darks going in the diagonal that way. And then we're going to sew them to, to these. First, I'm going to press these units open. And um, then I'm going to square up each of these checkerboard units to two and a half wide by four and a half long. That's really important so that they will match these really well. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. So I have these units pressed and I did go ahead and twist the centers on the center seam that I just sewed as well. Um, and I simply did that by twisting like that and then pressing it open. So I have all three of those units pressed and there wasn't a whole lot that had to come off when I squared it up, but it's very important that all of this be, be removed or you're gonna have issues when you're trying to sew things together. So now I'm going to sew these units together. Um, two of the checkerboards will get sewn to a four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle. I'm going to make three of these units for each 12 inch block. So here you see that I have each of the units pressed 
and um, squared up. Each unit needs to be squared up to four and a half by four and a half inches. Not a whole lot had to come up, but that's important that that gets removed. Now these three units are going to be sewn together to create the border for a 12 inch block. And let me do that and I'll be right back. So here is one border unit for one block, and I'm going to uh, press the seams, I'll probably press them all in one direction, and then I need to square this up so that it's four and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches long so that, that it will fit um, with the blocks. All right, so I've finished the border block, and it is, um, been, it's been pressed and squared up to four and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. You'll need one of these for every 12 inch block around the perimeter of your quilt. So with our mystery quilt, uh, if you are uh, making the winds of time and the wall size, it's a four by four layout, which means there are 16 blocks around the perimeter. So you'll need to make 16 of these uh, to uh, have enough for that entire uh, quilt, plus four of your corner blocks. So that's what you're going to need for that wall quilt um, that we're creating for the mystery quilt class. So now that we have our border units and four of our corner units ready, we're basically, what we've done is we've created a border unit for each 12 inch block. So if you'll see over here, I have a border unit for one, two, three, four blocks there and then I would create four more for the bottom. This is a four by four layout, therefore I need 16 of these units to go around the perimeter of the quilt, plus my four corner blocks, which are right up here. So there are my four corner blocks. In the case of my mystery quilt, Winds of Time, I have added an outer border, which is a one and a half inch wide border. You're welcome to do that. Maybe you want an even a wider border than that, but that's what I've added for the outside border. And I did that in the deep red on this particular quilt, which is one of my darks. And of course, with all of these quilts and with your scraps, you can play with the values. You can move the values around so that uh, maybe your border is uh, going to have lights for the strips. And then the um, checkerboard is going to be a medium and a light. Whatever, whatever you choose. This is your quilt. Have fun with it. So I hope you've enjoyed working on the mystery quilt for fall of 2022, which is the winds of time. Hope you've enjoyed learning how to make this beautiful scrappy border, which can be used at so many different quilts. It's very versatile and a lot of fun. So hopefully I'll see you all next week uh, for the block number seven of my 52 week series of my scrappy blocks. And leave some comments below. Let me know what you're working on and uh, which parts of the quilts you're really enjoying or maybe something that you might be struggling with. I love to hear from my viewers. Don't forget please to like and subscribe. That really does help my channel to get out to other quilters. Thanks so much and we will see you next week. Happy quilting.